<laughs> oh boy, should I upgrade from DSLR? Oh boy, yeah. Canon C100. So, if you're like me, you were probably a kid out of film school who invested in DSLR for music videos, artsy stuff, like directing and to spy on your neighbors. Just kidding. Now you've started to outgrow charging $100 for five hours of filming, super shallow depth of field, and having shitty tin can audio from the H4N you sync and post. It's time for something bigger. So you save up and make like 50 videos for local businesses, so that's like 2000 bucks for you because you have no business experience. Time to shop for a cool ass camera. Now you're stuck. Do you go? From a T3i with those 10 prime lenses everyone sold you on that you lug around to a GH4, better picture, 4K recording, data rates, color codes, numbers, 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 and specs, just like the DSLR. This doesn't solve your problem. You're looking at pictures and numbers and specs, but like it's Tai Chi, you are not one with this camera. You've never held it in your hands. Now, I can't tell you what to buy or what to do or who to listen to, but yeah, I can, so that's what I'm gonna do. Don't go right back to the DSLR lifestyle. Why? I had a T3i, I carried it around with all those lenses and the little body, and it's great for a tiny barrier of entry. But there's two very realistic things artistic people in this industry keep pushing that's driving me insane. One is that a DSLR is great for professional work. No, if somebody is paying you, you cannot afford to make a mistake like lighting or recording times or changing lenses and having to move the camera, you just can't do it. And if you come with those problems, that's why you're charging so little. Two, prime lenses are great. Sure, but nobody gives a shit and nobody's going to know the difference. When someone is paying you, it's more valuable to be able to zoom in than to stop the whole speech, go grab a different lens and move your camera. And that tiny little T3i, the sensor's not sharp enough for you to see the difference anyways, or for it to matter. I've never lost work over a lack of prime lenses or not having a shallow depth of field. I have lost work over not having continuous recording times, which is like conventions, speeches, conferences, meetings, surgeries, court stuff, anything live, not being able to zoom in to a stage that's far away, using separate audio recorder and people do not like the risk. Even if I get this work, I can't charge as much because I'm not giving the same quality and I'm not as well suited. As soon as I upgraded from a T3i to a Canon C100, I paid like $5,000 for the body, a 24 to 105 millimeter Canon, a Rode NTG2, batteries, cards, and a case on eBay. $5,000. I filmed bullshit like birds, people talking, filmed some fake interviews, did some fake lighting, and in two weeks, I had a new reel focused on corporate examples, which is basically good lighting, good audio, and a well-framed shot. I set up profiles on Production Hub and stapped me up and emailed it to my local marketing agencies in my city. Well, what's your rate? $600 a day, and you don't blink. Okay, they say, and they don't question it. I can command these prices because I don't have rinky dink separate audio recorders I forget to press record on. I don't have to switch lenses when we move. I can adjust settings quickly with on camera buttons. I can record for eight hours straight if I need to. My audio is great and it's always synced. The picture is sharper, the dynamic range is better, and I'm 100% certain that all the shortfalls that used to hold me back, every single one of them won't happen now. Because I can guarantee no screw ups, or at least a lot less of them, I can charge this much money. I paid 5,000 for it, it paid itself off in like two months, and that's just from filming, not from editing. I'm not counting jobs I could have got with a T3i, I'm talking about strictly jobs I got because I have this camera. Networks that come into town like HGTV and Discovery, they want something like a C100 or higher. Local videographers will work with you because you have a serious camera that's similar enough to theirs. And also, your audio is automatically synced. People at weddings want your card because your camera's big and it looks dope, and they, they don't know, but you know, it's work. All of this is great, but most importantly, when you pick a camera, it has to match you and everything you take it to do in a day. You have to feel it and hold it and work with it on something and see how it handles everything and what it makes easy for you. Go look at your footage after. Specs alone can be misleading. Like that Blackmagic production camera. I thought it looked great and then I filmed with it and it, everything came out like an Instagram filter. On specs alone, I wouldn't have chosen a C100. But the benefit of a camera like the C100 is that it's bringing me in real, livable money, not pocket change that drives down the value of everyone locally and makes you look cheap. Now I can get professional experience, make contacts, more money to buy more equipment. I'm still working in video production and I'm getting better and now I can afford to take weekends off to go do that artistic short film stuff. This is how you get a foot in the door the comfortable way. The C100 is only like 2000 bucks now anyways. DSLRs are great. They're cheap. They have a great picture. They take photos and they do what you need if you use it the right way and there's low pressure. I even sell an ebook and a bunch of videos on how to get into making great videos for as little money as possible and it's because of the T3i and the low barrier of entry. Other than that, this was the biggest jump and the best move I made in my career. I suggest you do it this way too. To recap, the reason I'm saying this is because the advantages aren't exclusive anymore. The shallow depth of field, the changeable lenses, low light performance, the price, these aren't exclusive to a DSLR anymore. But the drawbacks are. 
And before you go buy one of these cameras, please get a hold of it, rent it out, and if that's too expensive, just find an excuse or a way to get near one and play with it first. Don't just point and shoot, work with it for a day and see how you like it and see what it makes easy for you. Anyways, if you wanna play with some C100 footage, I have links to daytime stuff and some awesome low light shots in the description. And of course, I sell a bunch of videos for like 20 bucks that addresses all the shortfalls of the DSLR and how to work with it to get the best out of the camera if you want to save money and use one. But that's like all I wanted to say, so um, thanks, um, that's it.